All right, welcome everybody. This is Stone Monk Gamer uh, of the Mortal Realms podcast. Sometimes I'm uh, hanging out on Warhammer Weekly, trying to do some stuff on YouTube, all the time on Twitter, um, banging out some tweets, uh, sharing posts, etc. Sometimes on Facebook, blah, 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 blah. One of the things I'm probably most known for is uh, my crazy army conversions and themes, etc. Um, and uh, I wanted to, I don't know, create something that would kind of share my excitement, the, my process I go through to create some of these themed armies and the things I consider, um, not just aesthetic, but also, you know, how the kind of the, what would you call it, the the essence of the, the rules, the essence of the um, unit that I'm, you know, uh, trying to create, create something new from. Um, and uh, some of them that I've created, so I've got a, um, a Beast Claw Raiders uh, army that is uh, ogres mounted on Tyranids. Maybe sometime I'll do a video kind of walking through the process of how it came up with that, where it, where it went, what steps I had to go through. It was pretty arduous to, to get to the final uh, result. Um, but it, in, in all of this, this is part of my hobby, this, this labor of love, pouring over models and rules to try and find the right fit try and find, um, you know, uh, bits and conversions that look, that kind of are faithful to the model I'm using and the model it represents and just all that process. And so if you find that sort of thing interesting, um, then maybe you'll find this interesting. Um, and my also hope is that if you like what you see in one of these, you could do it too, you know, or instead you might beat me to it. Um, but uh, in my head, you know, in the same way that there's some solidarity between all Stormcast uh, players, you know, uh, the bunch of people have different Stormcast army. You know, a lot of people could have a, a Beast Claw Raiders uh, or, or Bug Claw Raiders army as well. Like, it's not just mine to have. You might want to create it. You might figure out some better conversion. And it might teach me something that I can do as I'm expanding my army later. In this uh, video, I'm going to be covering my latest kind of idea um, and I'm sure other people have thought of it before. I'm not the first. Um, and, but uh, it's really caught my attention, and I am really have been spending time pouring over it. So I know that's probably something that I'll be working on next. Um, and so I wanted to share with you and talk through my discovery. And in this video, we're going to be talking about Drukharidron Overlords. And so this is uh, uh, an Overlord, Karadron Overlords army in Age of Sigmar but using models from the Dark Eldar or Drukhari range in 40K, which is uh, 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 Games Workshop's sci-fi fantasy uh, game. Um, what's interesting is that with Age of Sigmar and some of these things, and specifically I think Karadran Overlords, is that the modeling, the materials used on their armor uh, is technologically advanced enough that it sort of starts opening the door for us to uh, kind of see some of that 40k aesthetic fit into a fantasy space. And specifically the, the Dark Eldar, uh, the Jukari, uh, their armor is, it doesn't feel super advanced. It's, it's, it's you know, leather, carapace, uh, some tubes, etc. So I think we've got a lot to get away with. Well, let me start with what my, my inspiration was. And some of it was just, sometimes I happen upon things. And the very first thing I happened upon was this amazing, um, uh, this amazing ship um, by a, a painter and entered into Cool Mini or Not. And this is terrible. I believe his name's Tom Allen. Uh, did a little bit of looking for him. He's hard to find. I think he's on Facebook a little bit. Um, but look at this thing. I mean, the this is a Forge World model. Uh, this is called the Tartar Tautilus. Um, I believe, and we'll look over these in a little bit, but this was where it started for me with this army, and I said, wow, uh, this is a huge ship. It, it easily fits in the uh, world of Age of Sigmar, this flying uh, ship that has sails, um, and that's another thing that kind of makes it kind of cool for, um, obviously fits into, makes me think of Karadron Overlords, is that it's a flying ship. Obviously, sails make it quite different from the ether or the endrins um, and that sort of thing um, but I have some thinking to do on in terms of like how does it work um, 
does this, since it's Caradrin, does it fit into the science, the fantastical science of the, the Caradrin overlords, etc. But the first thing I do when I, uh, I did when kind of seeing this and they started getting the idea, I started asking myself, um, you know, does this, does this work? Is there enough similarities here to match up to what a Caradrin army could be um, for it to be worth pursuing? Um, and my method when I'm going to build an army, I'm often going looking at the models I'm most excited about building. Um, I'm not as worried about at first whether they're the most points efficient, um, whether they're competitive, etc. I'm mostly looking at, at theme, aesthetic, etc. And so this one, uh, this ship right here, topped the list. And um, you know, even though uh, I've, I've only bought one Forge World model in my life, but I do see this in my future. And now this one is heavily converted for, from the original. And I'll, uh, I'll show you the original now. So this is the Tautilus um, miniature from Forge World. Uh, it is a really cool blades heavy ship, but there's not a lot of technology on it. The biggest pieces of technology are the guns here at the front. Um, and I can... Um, there's some guns here at the front. And there's engines here at the back. Um, certainly there's some, some kind of aesthetic technology with these kind of bulbous things. But to me that fits right into fantasy. Um, and, you know, this is, this is the kind of army in 40k where the technology is so advanced that it looks like magic. Um, and so, you know, that sort of thing. So beautiful shape to this. Um, it's got some figures in there. It's got these amazing big sails. Um, and my first thing, and, and so this is the, this ship right here, I think fits, um, or is a good balance or, or would be a, a proxy or counts as for the Caradron Ironclad. Now these aren't, I, don't, I haven't gotten into like size comparisons yet. Um, it looks like the Tautilus could be larger than the Ironclad, but I've also never seen an Ironclad person either. So um, these could be right on par. Um, I haven't checked to see if the base sizes or anything, but in the scheme of things, it's not as important um, for, for my build, uh, but I, I want to get an approximation. So um, what's cool about these tools, obviously these are the biggest guns. It's going to have the best armor. Um, the things that I'm probably concerned about, I'd be worried about, I guess, are there's uh, more guns on this ship. Um, than are in on the, the Tautilus. And so maybe that's something I need to consider. Um, there's uh, some interesting um, kind of characters and that sort of thing. The other piece that's going to be uh, interesting for this is that the, the Caradron have these, these bombs. And I, I don't know exactly yet, um, and it happens with it, their frigate as well. I don't know what I'm gonna do there yet. Um, so this is just first pass though. These two um, fit really well together. Um, I think that there's a really good comparison here. So then we have to move down the line, you know, and I'm excited about that Tautilus. That is a beautiful, uh, beautiful model. I've, n I've never painted a ship that size, so many curved flat edges. My airbrush is, I'm gonna have to learn a lot about using my airbrush to get, get better and get work on that. So, but let's keep, uh, let's keep looking. So next, we have our frigate. The frigate, uh, for what I've heard, is probably going to be the most used um, ship in uh, on the table, etc., and is the workhorse of the army. Um, and the the Dark Eldar or Drukhari range actually has three ships um, uh, that I think might be about the size. Again, I don't have comparison, but this is their kind of medium-sized ship. Uh, the first is a Reaper, and this is. Um, there's a base kit called the Raider. I'll show that one first then. Is the Raider. And this is uh, kind of the, the base um, base model. And it looks like it could be about the same size as the hull of the frigate. Um, but uh, there are two variations on this. One by Forge World, which is the Reaper. And this, you see, is what the Reaper's basically done is they've given it a new... Um, 
out front is this big gun and this sail um, and this fin uh, so or fin on both sides so uh, they've added a, a, a few things to this to just make it a little bit different and when I've seen this fin actually on other things it's pretty big I think this is kind of angled so I think this fin actually kind of comes back uh, that far so it's considerably larger um, than the fin on the Raider now the the next one uh, the other one that's available is the uh, Ravager. Now what's cool about the Ravager is it also has, so it has a front gun, which is similar to the frigate, but then it also has these um, side side guns that are kind of on, on these little gun platforms here, which I think fit really well uh, versus this. Um, again, um, the Ironclad has these bombs down here, or I'm sorry, the frigate has these bombs down here. So I need to come up with something. I don't know. Uh, I know that this model has these chains that come off with hooks. And so maybe there could be something there uh, that works with that. Um, and then, um, but it, you also start seeing some models that get me excited too, is you got to find out ways. Um, so we've got, uh, the frigate has this, this face motif. Um, but the Dark Eldar and the uh, Dark Elves kind of have that too. So I would love to figure out what to put, you know, here. You know, some sort of face um, or weirdness uh, to... Let's do something a little bit cooler than that. But uh, some weird looking face on the front of here to kind of, again, um, I want to, I want this to feel like, oh yeah, this is a Corridor overlord model meaning that when they're playing maybe across the table that people say oh yeah i believe that this lives and exists in that that rule set um and so i want to i want all these things represented here so when it comes to the frigate i do think that this ravager is the better uh, fit because it has these two guns now the <laughs> the the uh, frigate comes in two um to, I guess, gun configurations. It's got this sky hook, and it's got a, a bigger cannon. And so maybe, if uh, if that's the case, then this um, the Reaper might be the, the this gun at least might be a good um, pickup in order to represent the cannon. If I went that way. All right. So that's that's the frigate. Now let's look. Um, at the gun hauler. Now the gun hauler is a cute ship. Uh, it's small, it's, uh, it's maneuverable, all that kind of stuff. And initially I thought uh, there's a, a box set that's out for the uh, Dark Elves that has um, some infantry, that has one of these uh, Reavers, or I'm sorry, that has the, has the Raider, and then it has some, it has a, uh, these bikes. And so I initially thought maybe these bikes could be uh, good in place of that. Um, but they're a little bit small, in, and usually you can usually tell um, based on how they're packaged. Um, on you know from GW on how big of a kit it is, etc. So just where that that matches. So I actually think that the Venoms would be a better uh, fit, and there's a couple of reasons for this. Um, so one, you've got uh, over here in the gun hauler, you got multiple Dwarden hanging out in there. And so that's a similar here. You've got, here you've got actually four. Um, and so just the fact that, you know, that there's multiple models in there kind of works. Now you could have less in here. You could have one person in the cockpit, you could have one person on the gun, and then uh, we could have these other two hanging off of other ships, which would be cool. Um, again, there's a main gun here. Uh, and, you know, there's a main gun there. Maybe it needs beefing up, that sort of thing. Um, and then, again, these uh, Caradron ships have these bombs, these different kind of bombs, which is a fantastic, you know, you could almost ignore it, except for there's such great rules there um, that you really need to find a way to represent it here. So whether or not that's, um, you know, something that's sitting down here um, that we could pull from someplace else, other kinds of bombs, or sculpt them, etc., um, but I think these guys could, could really fit. Um, the biggest 
thing I've, I've, you know, what I liked about the other two ships uh, in the um, in the Drukari line uh, range is that they have those fins, and I'd like to make those fins big enough that they, you know, kind of are a stand-in for the engines. Now this one doesn't have a fin, and so maybe somehow we need to do that. Um, so just something to think about as we get the, to there. So I really like this one. I like this better than uh, going for the the Reavers. Um, so we'll uh, yeah. I think that that'll be a really that would be a really fun uh, stand in for that. Um, all right. So now we get to um, some infantry. So those are I mean those are the three main ships. The uh, frigate, the ironclad, the gun hauler, and you can see right off the bat, it was easy to find uh, some some models that are in parity with that from the Drukari range, and they're some of the most iconic. I mean, they're just they're just beautiful, and they they fit. I think that the um, let's see the this one right here. Another another thing to think about here is that this cockpit is so futuristic. So maybe that needs to needs to go, and that's more open air, like these other things are open air. Um, and, uh, you know, so just thinking about a, a few things that um, that help where there is kind of too advanced of technology that we get those out of there. Um, the other thing I'm thinking about, and, and just to kind of bring bring this to lower fantasy, is I do, all of these machines have these engines and uh, that sort of thing, but I'd like to make it so that these sails act in the same way as the endrins. And so they're somehow collecting the ether gold as it's coming through and either, you know, translating that into energy and therefore propulsion. Or they themselves are, you know, the, the sail itself is interacting with the ether gold and kind of being an, uh, an opposite force. And so in the same way that wind would push it against the sail in this way, more like the sail is, is, um, is reacting to the ether gold either in a, a repulsion kind of way, um, or you know the ether winds are pushing it. I don't know, um, and that's something you can think of again. That's fluff. That I I just need to figure out when it comes time to paint how to kind of make that come across, um, etc. All right. So these are the three ships, and that's I mean really the Caradron are really known for these ships. So getting that right and finding good fits was kind of most of the work, but. You need to field the whole army, you need battle line, all that kind of stuff. So the question is, uh, do we have uh, infantry? Um, so um, moving from there, we've got uh, the two kind of uh, flying Caradron Overlord units, and that's the Endriggers and the Sky Warrens. I don't know a thing about these two. I haven't read through the rules yet. I don't know what one one does uh, over the other. I don't know which is better than the other as far as, or, or even, you know, I see... Um, I guess I can kind of see that, you know, these guys have these mines or something up here, and this guy and this guy have hooks, um, whereas these guys have knives. This guy has a, a medium sky hook. This guy's got a, you know, the knife again, uh, and these guys have pistols. So, you know, there's there's some difference there, obviously, um, but I don't know in detail what they are. However. What I think would be amazing from the Drukhari line to fit into this are Hellions. Um, again, there's some other ones too, so I could have, I mean, I could have swapped back to um, these Reaver jet bikes. I mean, they come in threes, right? Um, and that could still work. Uh, they're very maneuverability. They kind of um, fit in there. I really like these uh, helmets um, and that sort of thing. So. You know that could work, um, and I—I I mean, I, from a size standpoint and a boxing standpoint, three and three, it makes a lot of sense. But um, these Hellions um, are also just have this. I mean, what's fun about these uh, end riggers and sky wardens is that I mean, they're dudes tied to a ball, um, and there's just kind of weird relationship between them, and. Uh, the, the Hellions have kind of this similar, you know, this kind of, um, I don't know, skateboard 
jet uh, pack, um, uh, surf pack or whatever with the dude hanging on top. Like there, there's almost this, there's a cool juxtaposition there. Um, and it looks like, you know, from the sky hooks, um, some of these swords and, and other, you know, I could easily put a hook at the end of that um, and that sort of thing. It seems like there could be some loadouts that fit. Um, and so then it would just be a matter of, of size. Do these, I mean, and I think that these, looks like these bulk out the model in general to maybe make it fit the bulk of this. Again, it's yet to be seen. I've got a couple of friends locally that have this, so there will be some time to, to measure up. Otherwise, those reavers could be a good alternative um, in that, you know, more things on kind of jet bikes. These feel like they could be more fantasy to me. Again, I would have to figure out how to put fins on them so that they're collecting um, ether gold the same way that these endrins do or expend ether gold, etc. So there's still some work on it. It wouldn't be a straight one-to-one. -one. Um, the other thing, uh, I do like that the Hellions, a lot of these models, we start getting into these exposed heads, which is different than what the Caradron have. They have these fully enclosed heads. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Some of these guys at least have uh, ma you know, face masks on. Uh, so it's something, that, but it's something we need to consider. But I think this, this is a great fit. Um, these are the Reavers. I, would, I personally like these better, and I think they could be modeled to, to fit the size and kind of space a little bit more. All right, um, this is where I kind of run into my first mm, snag. Um, let's see, the, the best I could do here are these Cableite Warriors. And really, it's just because these guys are kind of the more, I think they're kind of the more elite. They have a few different types of weapons, so this is one type of gun. Um, Let's see, this is one, this is one, this is one. Um, I think this one's a different type of gun, but I don't know. There's obviously this thing. I don't know if there's enough variation in weaponry here to represent the five different or more kinds of weapons that they carry. Um, so that's something that's probably going to be the biggest conversion as far as finding different bits or finding other weapons. Um, to try and figure out or even make some. I have no idea. Um, but they're more, they're more elite. The thing that this unit starts inserting into the mix are these fully masked, fully, fully masked heads. Um, and one of the things I want to consider is potentially outfitting all of the, um, all of the, the models, all the infantry in this uh, Drew <laughs> Karad, Jukaridron uh, Overlord Army with masks, um, so that it again it 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 is in line with what people expect to see with a uh, Karadron Overlord Army. Look, they're in masks. They're playing the sky. They, from a theme and story, they they follow some of the same rules, etc. Um, so again, that's important. Now the last uh, and probably most important uh, match is uh, the Arcanauts. Um, and it's really important here because these are the, the most thematic. Now, again, there's, uh, let's see. There's this pistol uh, that it looks like. That's a three-shot pistol, but there's a lot of pistols in here. Pistol, 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 pistol. And then we've got um, some, oh, I think, are these light sky hooks? Oh, that's a medium sky hook. Maybe that's a light sky hook. Here's a Gatling gun. Um, here's, and then they all have these uh, kind of a melee weapon. You know, these axes and, and swords and stuff. Um, and I think it's, I mean, the Jukari also have a, a main infantry unit, and that is uh, witches. Um, now, the witches obviously have uh, these melee weapons. Um, they also have pistols, um, and so there's some good parity there. Um, and then you've got a couple of, you know, you've got this weird, you got a whip. Um, it looks like you've got some interesting melee things with chains. So maybe these, or, you know, I some of the kits do have, from the Raider, do have big hooks. And so maybe these light hooks could be modeled on there. These 
Uh, maybe a rifle from one of the other kits could be added with a hook on it for something like that. Uh, and then this one, I have no idea. I have no idea uh, what um, handheld gun uh, that the Ducari have that could fit that. Uh, but, um, again, and then if, if you could put uh, helmets on these guys so that they kind of look like they're, they're more ready to be up in the clouds like the, El like the Caradron are. Let's see. You know, maybe they fit that aesthetic better, or maybe they they just fit. Um, you know, you could easily say that you know they've got some masks on, some take to the breathing in the ether gold more than others, and maybe that adds to the story in that they breathe in enough of it, they go a little mad, and that changes the way these guys uh, act and behave as dark elves uh, or drukari. Um, so. Um, you can see as I walk through the things I'm comparing, the things I'm trying to match up, the, the things I'm wrestling, there's some obstacles for sure in, t in some of this, uh, you know, these weapons that are, that may not exist in this line that the Karadrin have uh, in spades. Um, and so trying to figure out how do I, how do I do that? Um, and even some of the guns that the ships have are lighter and thinner in nature than the ones that the Karadrin have. So do they... Do they make a good count as? Uh, are they believable? Um, so this is the first. And so from this initial pass of the, you know, comparing units, um, I do think that there is a great case for making a, a Drukhari-themed Karadron Overlord army, what I'm calling the Drukhari drawn Overlords. Um, what, what I haven't gone through next and what I hope to go through next are um, some of the rules uh, for the ships. Again, getting back to trying to do some modeling and getting things to match up, and then um, uh, the and then paint schemes. The uh, then also um, heroes. Um, the Drukari have a number of heroes. Some of them uh, are the Dark Eldar and the Dark Elves. Um, uh, have some, you know, uh, the Scourge, the Scourge um, privateers, etc. Maybe there's some some uh, models from there. Uh, so, In Search of Heroes is going to be one of the next things I'm looking at. Um, and all the time I'm looking at paint schemes, so I'll do a pro hopefully do... I'm terrible at sequels, uh, so maybe I'll do an episode on, on color scheme and that sort of stuff to try and figure it out. Um, and then hopefully if I get around to making this, I'll have some videos showcasing how I go about it. But um, I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that if you have any feedback... If you have any uh, ideas, if you have uh, something to share, if you have a different idea of which way this could, get, could go, please share that down below. Um, if you want to start making this army yourself, please do and share those uh, progress um, picks with me. Maybe you'll help me do it better when I get around to it um, and vice versa. Um, uh, you know, these armies, these great ideas, I'm, I'm, again, I'm sure I'm not the first one to think about it. Uh, I know I'm not the first one to think about it, um, and some people have gone about it different ways. Uh, we can create our own little community of, of <laughs> Quadrant Overlord players that are using uh, Dark Elf and Drukhari models uh, as, as stand-in. Um, so, uh, like this video, subscribe to the channel, uh, listen to the Mortal Realms podcast when you get a chance. Find me on uh, Twitter, at StoneMonkeyGamer, and uh, share your feedback. I hope you enjoy this, and... Uh, Hope to, to share ideas, more ideas with you soon.